This video will cover the topic, finding values in intervals where the graph of a function is zero, positive, or negative. In these problems, we are given a function on a coordinate plane and asked to identify when different points and intervals of the function are less than, greater than, or equal to zero. Let's say we're given this function, y equals f of x. Sometimes, the problem will inquire about a specific point. So if we're asked, is f of negative four negative? Well, when I see f of negative four, I want to look at the point where x is negative four, right? Right, and we can see from the graph that when x is negative four, f of x is two, because the y value of this point is two. And since two is positive, then f of negative four is not negative. So the answer to our question is no, right? That's right. Let's move on to another question we might be asked. For which values of x is f of x equal to zero? Since y values above the x-axis are positive and y values below the x-axis are negative, our function will equal zero where it crosses the x-axis. All right, so I can see from the graph that there are points of the function on the x-axis when x equals negative three, zero, and two. Is that it? Right, so when x is negative three, zero, or two, f of x will equal zero and is neither positive nor negative. Another question we might see is, for which values of x is f of x less than zero? Since all numbers less than zero are negative, and the function is negative when it is below the x-axis, we must determine at which points the graph is below the x-axis. So do we have to write out all of those points? Fortunately, no. If we tried to do that, we would be working forever because there are an infinite number of points on a graph. To make things easier for us, mathematicians devised interval notation. With interval notation, we can write out an entire set of points using parentheses and or brackets. For example, if we wanted to indicate numbers less than or equal to six, but greater than or equal to one, we would write open bracket one comma six close bracket. The brackets tell us that the numbers 1 and 6 are included in the set because x is greater than or equal to 1 and x is less than or equal to 6. If we wanted to indicate numbers less than 4 but greater than 2, we would write open parentheses 2 comma 4 close parentheses. The parentheses tell us that the numbers 2 and 4 are not included in the set because we have x is greater than but not equal to two and x is less than but not equal to four. Let's apply this notation to our problem. So the graph is below the x-axis when x is between negative three and zero and when x is between two and five. So we put those in brackets, right? You're very close. Earlier we determined that when x equals negative three, zero, and two, f of x equals zero. Since zero is neither positive nor negative, we can't include these values as being less than zero and we must use parentheses next to them. However, since f of x is at negative one when x equals five, this is less than zero and we can include this in the set and write a bracket next to it. Oh, I think I get it now. So is this it? Are we done? We still have to indicate that both intervals are answers to our question. We can do this with a union symbol, which looks like a U. This tells us that our sets are related to each other. In this case, they are both intervals of x where f of x is less than zero. So in solving problems like these, we need to remember that the function is positive above the x-axis, negative below the x-axis, and zero on the x-axis. Also, when writing sets of numbers in interval notation, brackets indicate the end numbers are included, and parentheses indicate that the end numbers are not included. 